As you know, Ladies Give Back, and this year we have partnered with Children's Hospital Los Angeles Make March Matter. It's a special month-long fundraising campaign that takes place right in our neighborhood to support Children's Hospital Los Angeles, which is a nonprofit pediatric hospital that's ranked among the top five in the nation. More children receive care from Children's Hospital LA than anywhere else in our region, and we need to help them make sure they can provide all their patients with the same world-class medical care. That is why for the entire month of March, the Lady Gang is raising awareness by donating 20 percent of our proceeds from our store to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. So visit shop.theladygang.com to give back. And we have some super cute items that are up to 60% off right now in our warehouse sale. And so make March matter with us. Thank you. Today's episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Sambacol. So let's talk about health for a minute because there's nothing more important than taking care of yourself. I think that we can all agree, you know, as we get older and we feel our bodies kind of crumbling into oblivion, that we really need to take care of our bodies. If you're not feeling your best, you just can't be your best in all aspects of your life. So Sambacol helps you feel your best by supporting your immune system with premium black elderberry. Sambacol is the original black elderberry brand, so I know that I am getting the immune support that I can really trust. So I take one or two Sambacol gummies every morning to help make sure that I can keep doing what I need to do that day. And I love the gummies because they are delicious. They're like my little morning treat. I take them with my coffee to get my day started off right. So you can help support your entire family's immune system with Sambacol. Get 15% off your next order of $9.99 or more at SambacolUSA.com and use code LADY. That's 15% off your next order of $9.99 or more with code LADY at SambacolUSA.com. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight and someone that we've been stalking for many, many, many years. I mean, forever. It's like King Jesus is here. <laughs> <laughs> and in the flesh. We flesh. never record in person. We're no. always Zooming with people. We haven't had a guest in person since before COVID. Yep. You're so, our first. Guys, I'm so flattered. Yes. Honestly, you're so cute in real life. It's like actually annoying. But I know. <laughs> I That's I know. Cute with your denim on denim. Okay. <laughs> Do we want to introduce her? Yeah, you haven't said Jenny her name. <laughs> so you all follow her already on Instagram. Yep. Um, so we don't normally have good week, bad week with the guests, mm-hmm. but we felt like we can't let it's like the funniest person on the planet. Right. We can't give her a guest star when mm-hmm. she's deserving of a series reg. She's a series yes. regular. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> it's time for Good Week. Yes, it is. Bad week. Oh no. Um, I think I'm going to just like break the ice. Okay. Great. I think it's appropriate. Yes. And now that, okay. I have been trying to take on a lot of Kelty's, um, ways. Like a, mm-hmm. I wanted to 2022, adopt a baby. lot of your, you know, go get them attitude mm-hmm. and a little bit mm-hmm. of the shameless mm-hmm. stuff that she does in her mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. And, um, she's always saying to me, like if I ha- if I were you, if I could take over your body, if I could have done that, you would have been Jennifer F- Lawrence. I believe it. Yeah, but I just don't. I can't operate like that. And so I did something <gasps> recently. I was channeling Kelty. Great. And this has to do with Jenny. <gasps> Jenny, you wrote your own Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Of course. Okay. Are you on Wikipedia? Obviously, people, we've people, contributed. Uh, obviously, I'm like, you missed something. <laughs> You've like, gone and edited. You of course. Do you, you ever me. like? You, you should probably you not. Your Wikipedia. I don't have yes. a Wikipedia. You guys, back in the day, you like the to. only it's all you had. Wikipedia was all on you. Like nobody added mm-hmm. to it. You had to like. Do you be. check to make sure nobody's like talking shit in there? Mm. Sometimes people are like, Kelty, Colleen looked. is a stripper, and I was like. <laughs> Mm. She was on a topless show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to die. Okay. So Jenny posted mm. on November 16th, mm. her article from, what was this from? What is this? Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood Reporter. Jenny oh. Mullen's City of Likes to be developed as TV series by Nacelle, Nacelle, Nacelle and Sony life. Pictures. Sony. You know them. Mm, you no know, big deal. You're familiar. So I was like, my normal thing as me would be a double click and then something like, congratulations, Mm -hmm. this is incredible, Mm -hmm. like so deserved, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, what would Kelty do? Mm -hmm. What would Kelty Mm -hmm. do? And I did something that I went back to this four times and almost 
and almost deleted my own comment, but you can't. Yes, you can. You can? On Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, oh. that trash button, baby. I just read it, and I'm already sweating. Okay. okay. Oh, my God. I love you. I'm so upset. I love you. Okay. And Allie back here, my friend Allie She's is just dying. giggling. She's, like, like the least she's impressed even... with me of anyone in, on Earth. So we're even hearing this, <laughs> she's, she's like, what is this wanna... bullshit? Oh my God. No, I want to set the scene. Allie is sitting in a Dog Sherpa bed. restoration <laughs> hardware poof. <laughs> Callie has taken her on as the pride mom, and she's wearing a skims long cardigan coat in the same poof as the restoration poof like she belongs here she's never leaving Allie you're here forever welcome to your new home (laughs) Callie has both paws on thighs being like and I'm regal as fuck like it is incredible okay Becca did you find the comment yeah it's here okay it says fine comma I'll do it (laughs) (laughs) with the emoji of the hard eyes oh my god amazing who are you wow. that's so gross i love this sounds it like, this sounds like the text no, that so i used funny. to send when i would take an ambien and yes. then i'd wake up the next morning being like oh my god, god what I have wish i, I done? could unsend that text message. i felt Fine, like i needed to it. send a handwritten apology are you kidding note no, to be amazing. like I am so sorry that I am. What I think I think I read it and thought it, oh, that is so funny. Honestly, I, it could, I thought it was going to be way worse than that. No, yeah, I did think good. it was going to be worse. Someone like myself, that it can't get worse than that. Yeah. Here's the thing, it can't. Oh, I but it. what I see as a as a thing in both of you is that you've been beat the f- up yes. by the audition yeah, process. We just have abused. different ways of dealing with it. No, but I but it's, I'm the shelter dog who cowers in the corner and shakes, and you're the one that bites people's <laughs> I'm, kids. I'm the pit bull that like attacks and like, mauls its it. owner. You don't I like me? It. I'll show you how much you don't <laughs> like me. <laughs> I like mall my new owner. Hey, Beck, I'm proud of you, though. Honestly, Thank I'm you. proud that of you. That is amazing. And it's funny something. is when her dis- oh, and she, and <laughs> Becca, she's here. You didn't scare her away. Yeah, you didn't scare her away. When yeah. she was doing Turn on Hooch on Disney and she was doing all this fucking national press, she was staying at my house because she had, like, literally come from. Anyway. I had her in the corner. I like set up the lights. I was like, you look amazing. You need a, like a pussy bow top. Like you're so respectable. You're an uh-huh. actress. And I, she was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm like in a fucking Amazon leopard House baby doll dress, dress. Yeah. and my like slippers. And I'm like, you're amazing. You've got this. You're the bitch. This like, is amazing. <laughs> Psycho. She's psychotic. Psycho. Becca's so talented. She doesn't even know okay, it. Okay. So what's your bad, bad week? week? Oh, that was your bad week? Yeah. I mean, oh, I obviously good week, it was okay. an, an good. addition. Okay. Um, my good week is obviously that Jenny's here, but also I blacked out last night. I know I saw. And you still out. look so good. I, uh, I mean, I have like teenage acne. Um, I browned out because I have vague memories of of the night. So I went to dinner with my friend Taylor, who just recently had a newborn baby, and he, it was like his first dad night out. Mm-hmm. And we were drinking chartreuse, which is like the most disgusting mm-hmm. liqueur you could ever yes. imagine. But I am like. I am a sheep, <laughs> and I just did it. What is chartreuse? What is it from? Sounds like, like a, it, it monks. No sounds like apparently, it was like something that monks mm. deliver. Is like, it from a grape? I don't know. It tasted hmm. like it could have been. Okay. Um, but we woke up this morning, and I just remembered ha- like ha- making videos, like videos of the night, whatever. Mm-hmm. When we got back to the hotel room, Come here. and so I had a video this morning in my phone of my friend Taylor falling. Oh my god, what is your you? voice? Oh my god. Yeah. Is he a dancer? On. Yeah. We we met each other doing high school musical. Oh wait, hold on, this is too long. I will put this on Instagram for people to see, but Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! That's amazing. Wow. Honestly, wow, I'm jealous. I was kind of pissed honest. when you left me to go stay at a hotel, but now I feel like you had fun. So I had a great time. There's this pic. There's a video of me dancing and then dropping into a jazz split amazing. and like falling on the floor. Good. And I really, I didn't have any shame when, like, I didn't have that like wake up at six a.m. and mm-hmm. that feeling that you up or you mm-hmm. said something right. wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. or you like i anxiety up, anxiety yeah and i didn't have any and Good i think word. it's the first time in a decade that i didn't yes. have anxiety from drinking too it much. might be like a turning point does it this might mean just i can gone. do it again yeah like, really mm-hmm. get get after it yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Welcome to the dark side. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> okay, I'll go next. My good week. <clears throat> I was recently at the foot doctor because I'm an elder. And I was sitting at Dr. Levine's office and I looked up at his... Are you filming yourself right now? No, I'm looking... <laughs> How dare you? I would never. <laughs> I'm looking at his wall of products and I see urea cream. And I was like, hmm. So I'm waiting for him to come in. I pull it down and it's like urea. And then I Google what urea is and it's urine. And I feel like I have been telling people since 2003 when I was a rocket that if you get a fucking infection or a blister on your foot, all you need to do is pee on yourself and let it dry and sleep in it overnight and that blister will be gone. And now Dr. Levine is selling a urine cream for $69. I don't know. Anyone's. <laughs> I thought you were going to. His urine. <laughs> No, I, and, he was, Le- and I said to him, at is Adam Levine's <laughs> urine? That wouldn't heal anything. That would literally like get you more infected. It'd be like, man, pop song, here we go. She no, I thought you were going to say it was the cream that I just discovered, which is a cream that you can get on, you know that website like Face RX, where you can get like mucin- mucily. Is that like, like a snail, snail hydro- troll cream? No, it's to bleach your privates. <gasps> I, and I might do it. Because no. I, Seems like something you shouldn't do at your own house. Okay, my bad week. Um, I was recently, um, since my career is like the hottest it's ever been, uh, (laughs) hosting a holiday dog series. You were hosting a holiday dog series? This just happened. You guys have already seen it. It was a big deal. On on the CW, I had to go to Canada. Mm -hmm. It was a series about great dogs. (laughs) My career is so good. What's it's really, I'm really thriving. Anyway, so I'm, I'm at, I'm on the beach. I'm doing my standups about amazing dogs and I'm already feeling like, what the fuck am I doing? My career, like I'm turning 40. I'm officially dead. Like I'm just going to do dog shows for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking awful. And I felt like, okay, well at least like everyone on the beach is like, what's happening over there? Cause they have like the big scrimmy things and like they're blocking the light for me or whatever. And the director's like, huh? And he's looking at me and he's looking, he's looking at me. He walks up to me and he literally went on the top of my head and plucked out a gray hair no. that was ruining no. the shot. Oh, no. no and I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, it just stands up and you can really see it. And I was like, meow, 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 that's meow. rude. Anyway, Stop. oh my God. I wanted everyone to know that I'm fucking old. Okay, Jack. <laughs> Okay, so and my career has never been hotter. You're welcome. Year of the dog. You know what? I think the dog show suits you. You know what? You. <laughs> okay. What else suits me? Hosting the Golden Globes. Mm. So my good week is, and this is embarrassing because I just did a good week recently about a spray tan. I'm a little bit addicted to spray tans. It's her the one thing we don't like about her. As we, <laughs> I am so ghostly white and it makes me very insecure so anytime I'm doing anything I'm like I need a spray tan so I was doing a photo shoot recently it was on a Monday and I needed a spray tan on a Sunday my girl only works Tuesday to Thursday of course so Mm -hmm. I was texting her on the side because we're friends we text whatever yeah you see her twice a week you should be friends (laughs) and I texted her I was like girl this is an emergency I need to get spray tanned this weekend she's like well I'm going to Malibu wines on Sunday so I don't know how much I'll be drinking she texts me at like 7 no. p.m. She's like, I'm blacked out drunk, but I will spray tan you if you come and pick me up from my house and like oh drive me to the spray tan place. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, I'm desperate. This sounds like something is, Jenny might get herself yeah, into. Yeah, I can see myself going down like, this path. I was like, is this worth it? it absolutely. No f-ing yes. 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 So I go and I pick my girl up from her house. I drive to the spray tan salon. She opens up the door. She is f***ed up. Jack, what is wrong oh my with god you? gives me a full spray tan i'm really really nervous about it because i'm like I, she is waving the thing around she's going close and then far <laughs> i woke up the next morning with like the best spray tan of my entire life <laughs> <laughs> you're a bronze goddess she texted me she's like how is it i was like honestly and she didn't make me pay for it because she's like i'm not gonna make you pay for it when i'm blacked out i would have made you pay double <laughs> yeah 100 percent. she's specialty she offered me a beer we we're drinking beers while she was tanning wow. me. it good was amazing you. good for you 
I just don't know why. Like, Lady Gang is now in its seventh year. Yeah. On year one, Becca told us about the L'Oreal Sun List that you can get for seven ninety nine at CBS. Like, I don't understand why you never it's got not, on that. It's not the same. It is absolutely it's not the, the same, same as a it professional. It doesn't get the pigment she prefers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, hold on. Let me just give you a visual. I, I'm, knew. I'm usually not that bad. Hold on. It's only... Okay, mm. what's your good week? That's my good week. Okay, what's it was your bad week? the best week? spray tan I've ever is had. That- okay, my bad week is I was <laughs> recently coming back from the desert, Hot. driving back from like Palm Springs area, and I go to stop at a gas, gas station. station. We're filling up. Are you, are you okay? No, I'm just saying like, that's what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would do. You have to I pee. I stopped at a... a we're stopping at a gas station. We're like getting gas. So the car in front of us was oh this God. old... Was this old, like, Cadillac kind of a car or whatever. Cute. This guy comes out. He opens up the trunk of his car. Dead body. Pulls out Shut a up. glass jar, a massive glass jar Pickles. full <laughs> of hard-boiled eggs. What? And out then his trunk? takes a hard-boiled no! egg and do that. pops it in I his would do mouth. That. A warm. And puts the jar. It was hot as in the desert puts the jar of the hot hard boiled eggs back in his trunk jack when you need protein you need protein (laughs) i would do that i will eat i do not discriminate against food that's temperatures nothing really no you would eat a hot hard desert egg egg. yeah yeah yeah. Mm. for sure Mm. (laughs) i when i do them at my house sometimes i don't wait for them to cool but this is a cooled that's gotten hot. <laughs> that's probably not that's reheated. reheated. That's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> and reheat it. Okay. So for the f- second time ever in Lady Gang history, we've invited one of our guests to Good Week, Bad Week. Here mm-hmm. we go. Yeah. Okay. Don't disappoint. So Good Week, I feel like, was last night. It was <gasps> pretty amazing. I... How, I do this elf thing with my kids. <laughs> it, it's not by choice. Somebody gifted me these fucking elves. Like an elf on a shelf? An elf on a shelf. And now it's just, I can't stop it. And mm-hmm. my son expects the elves mm-hmm. nightly to perform for him. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, knew I was leaving town and I'm very competitive with Jason mm-hmm. just on every level. I love it. Not just career wise. Also as, par- as parents, <laughs> we're very competitive. And so I knew that <laughs> with me leaving town, I was leaving him with elf on a shelf duties. Yeah. So I'm like this fucking last night of me here as elf on a shelf has to be so far superior yeah. to the elf on a shelf <laughs> that he's about to do sure. that I'm going to go out of my f-ing way to make this magical. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wandering through Union Square and I come upon this like chocolatier who's in the, the like Vionox mar- like the Christmas market yeah. that's in okay. Union Square. And he's making like chocolate molds of like nuts and bolts and screws and whatever. So I'm like, oh, n- chocolate nuts and bolts. Interesting. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take two. (laughs) Then I go straight to the hardware store to match the chocolate bolts to real nuts and bolts. Then I hide the chocolate bolts, right? And go home to my four-year-old. And I'm like, oh, look what I found today. These little nuts and bolts. I'm like, do you want them? And he's playing with them. He thinks they're cool. And I'm like, oh, you should give them to the elves. Just see if they'll do anything funny with them. Oh. Then my seven-year-old comes home and I blame the four-year-old. I'm like, Lazlo wants to see if the elves will do anything to his nuts and bolts tonight. So leave those next to the elves. Kids go to sleep. <gasps> they wake up in the morning. They've Chocolate. become f***ing chocolate. Wow. Good luck, Jason. Good luck. <laughs> wow. And I'm out. That's f***ing <laughs> great. That is incredible. That is the extreme I will go to to one up my husband. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, it's incredible. What incredible. the kids do when they were you were they awake when you? Left? Oh yeah. Oh, I made sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling like you want to go check? Uh, their minds were blown, which is amazing. I was so happy. But now I'm so proud of myself. You really, f- Jason? Because yeah. they're gonna be like. Hey, Dad, we're going to leave this out and see if they turn this to I can't wait. Oh, my God. Amazing. I can't wait for tonight, guys. I'm What's literally giddy. <laughs> First of all, this is the longest episode of Lady Gang. We have got to go. When we come back, more with Jenny. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Freshly. It is so hard to find a fast pre-cooked meal that is not frozen, solid, or, you know, highly processed. And that is why we love Freshly. No one wants to spend an hour cooking dinner after a rough day, a crazy commute. You get home. Maybe your kids are super hungry. Your husband's hungry. You're hungry. You just want something that gives you flavor, convenience, and nutrition really, really fast. And that's why Freshly is so amazing. Get delicious chef-made nutrient-packed meals delivered straight to your door. No 
cooking required, fresh, never frozen, ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Use the Freshly website or app to find meals that fit your lifestyle with plans that work for your dietary needs and preferences, taste, and family size. Choose from over 50 nutritionists to decide entrees like their classic steak peppercorn, multi-serve sides like their masterful mac and cheese, or their new line of plant-based meals. Skip the groceries and skip the dishes. And that's what I love the most. Stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $80 off your first four orders when you go to Freshly.com slash lady. That's $80 off at Freshly.com slash lady. There is no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. A product that works wonders for curls might make straight hair limp and greasy. Thanks to my personalized pros routine, I can honestly say I've never been more in love with my hair. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it is personal using natural ingredients with proven results. Pros customizes every product in your routine from shampoo to supplements. So first pros starts by asking you as a person, their in-depth consultation. They ask about you and your lifestyle, your hair, all those things, even your zip code. So next, Pros analyzes all the answers and determines the unique blend of ingredients that should be used in every product of my custom routine. Together, Pros got all my hair care goals covered. So Pros is healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash lady gang. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash lady gang for your free in-depth hair care consultation and 15% off. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Squarespace. I absolutely love Squarespace. It is how we run the ladygang.com. What's so cool is it really can help you build and grow your business online. So not only is it super easy, like Instagram filter easy to put together a beautiful, beautiful website, but there's all these analytics behind the scenes that you can help engage with your audience, sell anything, make great content. Everything's super chic. And I just feel like we've used Squarespace since the beginning of Lady Gang. And it's just one of those things that you can literally get a podcast up overnight. Right now we have a special deal for you. So check out squarespace.com slash lady for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use our offer code lady to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. It's really, really easy to sign up. And what's cool is you can go right now to squarespace.com slash lady and just like set up your Squarespace and set up your website and just try it out. Try out all the fonts, try out all the templates. And then if you love it, which you're going to, then you can launch. Don't wait to start your business or make Make your business amazing today. Squarespace.com slash lady. Now back to the lady gang. Our guest today is funny as she's a writer, columnist, Instagram personality, New York Times bestselling author of I Like You Just the Way I Am and Live Fast, Die Hot, both incredible reads. She's also the author of City of Likes, which isn't even out yet and is already being turned into a damn TV series. She writes a stand-in column for Parents Magazine and is a reoccurring co-host on The Wendy Williams Show and regularly appears on GMA, The Today Show, and Rachel Ray. She's also an actress. She's appeared in Wilfred, Suits, This Is a Good Story, CSI New York, Crash, the WB series Angel, and... She played a reoccurring character in the third season of HBO's Girls, and now she's joining the podcast game. The Third Wheel podcast launches in January on Podcast One. Welcome to our dysfunctional family, baby. <laughs> she's hot. She drove all the way to the valley from Encino, and I confirm that Encino she... Encino is the I valley. I know. Isn't that right next to each other? Yeah. Live your life. Let me... <laughs> continue and i can confirm she did not bring me one of her fancy lunch boxes from her dictator lunches instagram handle what the f- please welcome to the lady gang jenny mullen guys welcome. what an intro you've done a lot in your life damn oh are God. you exhausted i'm fucking so tired guys <laughs> <laughs> i'm hanging on by a th- thread i mean it's like just when you're like you know what i think i'll write a novel and then turn it into a tv show but also launch a podcast yeah, and make what? a f-ing babble cheese with what? googly eyes a for babble? my child oh, oh. what's a babble oh my god i don't know what you're trying to say the little baby bell cheeses oh, baby with the bell. red and she baby takes bell. off the middle so it has a mouth and then she puts googly no, eyes I, on it's it. insanity love and i, I love, love that, that you did that you do and did call your son the dictator he is the dictator <laughs> and now that i've sort of I'm trying to do some more stuff with dictator lunches. Everybody keeps saying, like, are you sure for a brand the, the word dictator isn't off-putting? I'm like, well, it's just the truth, and moms understand that. Moms today get it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know what everyone's wondering if they follow you on Instagram. I wondered for so many years what your kids looked like because you cover oh. their faces. Mm. I was like, is she covering their faces because they're unattractive kids? I feel like Jenny would be somebody to know if her kids were not attractive enough for the gram. Yeah. So that was this my theory. Hysterical. That was oh, my theory funny. for a little bit. But then yeah. something crazy happened. Mm? I was leaving a hotel downtown. I was in New York. I think oh, I was in Soho. Yes. And at this point, we were only Instagram, like, acquaintances. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I, I walk out, and I, I see her, and like a psychopath, and I never do this. I was like, Jenny? <laughs> oh, my God. And oh, she turns so around. gross. Full I'm, on stalker But mode. I didn't feel weird about it because we share Tom Lank yeah, in common. Yeah, we have a mutual friend. Okay, okay. And, Tom and is, you know who she is. So yeah, it's not and sh- we, like, hate the same people, so I feel Great. like that bombs you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's the same people they hate too. We're oh, all wonderful. yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. We're connected. Yeah, yes. you can't be in a podcast unless you hate the same people. Yeah, yeah. It would oh, it would that's... implode. Yeah, we would have already yeah. broken up seven years <laughs> yeah. into it. Like, you have to have all the same enemies. Yes. Yeah, Genius. and know where the bodies are buried. It's true. Genius. So, so with Jenny is her son, mm-hmm. yeah. and I was like, <gasps> "You're like your face that's is beautiful," what it looks like. and I'm not you're like, kidding you're you. Cute. I was like, "That's one of the most beautiful children I've ever seen in my life," and I was like, "Why would you not show yeah. that you have like?" A really, I don't I haven't I'm seen the other one. I'm scared to show he's him. So he's too cute. He's so cute. Is that why you're scared? <laughs> well, I honestly because people I, won't believe your brand will be off. They won't believe your life is hard. They won't believe in the dictatorship. <laughs> yeah. Actually, but no, you know it honestly comes from I think being a child of the '80s and watching too many after school specials. And I, I have so much anxiety in general. I'm afraid for people to see my kid mm-hmm. and, then, and then steal him. Deal it. Yeah. Yes. And also, I feel like I don't want him to know that Instagram exists. Like and he yeah. doesn't, he's said the word Instagram now, now that he's in mm-hmm. second grade a couple times. And I'm like, what, what are you talking? And I just play dumb. I don't know what he's talking about, <laughs> but you know, I don't want him to be at the park in New York city and somebody to be like, Oh, that's, that's Sid. That's Jenny's kid. Yeah. Right? That scares that's, the well, out that's, of me. Terrifying. That's why my sister, right? yeah, my sister was saying, she's like, I was so weirded out. There's a blogger, mommy blogger yep. that she follows. And she was walking down the street saw a nanny with a child yes. and she f-ing knew that Who's that was the child of this blogger. Oh, and she no. was like, that would be so easy for someone to just kidnap oh my God. them. It scares me to death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do, I really don't understand. It baffles my mind why, you know, some of these like way higher profile people like are just advertising their kids all the time. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. crazy. It scares me. And I also don't want him to come to me one day and be like, mom, why are there like 60,000 Googleable mm-hmm. nudes of me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, for, or for him to like you know? grow up and be like, you know what? This really me up thank this you really for plastering me, me on instagram yeah, yeah. yeah. you're like them up for another reason you yeah know? like from that's your own you from your 100 percent from your parroting like the rest of us yeah. 90s children yeah. exactly. not from instagram i still exploit him for my comedy and my writing sure. but i really don't want to show his face yeah i love it that's I think fair both fair. of them but they're so cute but well, i'll he show is. you pictures of them before okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah oh my gosh so take me so i've read both of your books you're so great do you want to know something actually i have to tell you guys Sometimes I'll send Jason pictures, screen grabs, <laughs> and I'll like put like Brad Pitt or somebody else in like a two frame, mm-hmm. or and then it'll be like Sid or Lazo on the other side, like to sit, like <laughs> to see, to I be like, like look at, yeah, look like, at this beautiful. genetics, look at the like, DNA. Can you even? Are you the father? This? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I do yeah. appreciate that. Unbelievable. Like, you're really, sick. you're so <laughs> so. Weird. I'm trying to find sick. a picture of your dad. I feel like you post him a lot. There was one that was like extra extra steamy. Oh yeah, he I was love probably topless. Dad. He never wears clothes. <laughs> is he LA? Is like, he in Arizona? Arizona? Oh, an Arizona uh, man yeah. loves the sun. He's like a sports. Is it McConaughey? Dog. He's actually afraid of the sun. He lathers in sunscreen. That's probably why he's so hot. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, so he he has perfect, you know, Ashkenazi mm-hmm. like porcelain mm-hmm. skin, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. and he has like abs at seventy six. Gross. That's insane. Oh, this isn't a shirtless one. <laughs> Let me no, see. I need shirtless. Okay. Well, oh. very cute. I Full sure head of okay. brown hair. So I, I, I'm going to. Uh, I want to quote you back yourself uh, that I loved from your book. I like you just the way I am, and I had it. So when I knew you were coming on, I went into my Kindle and I went into my highlighted passages cool. oh from your God. books, like things that spoke to me. And then I'm so embarrassed that this is what spoke to me. But this is the 
fucking best paragraph that I've ever heard. And I wish we could be this cool. Okay. (laughs) She says in this book, I need everyone to love me. My feelings of inadequacy and lack of parental attachment have made me one of those six sick bitches who can't tolerate being ignored. My parents say all the right things when they're pretending to listen to me. But the truth (laughs) is they're more like cats. They accidentally had a litter of kittens and then emotionally moved on to whatever ball of yarn rolled past their line of sight. When self-obsessed people breed, they make empty people like me who spend the rest of their time on earth trying to gain the love and approval they didn't get as a children didn't get as children this doesn't excuse my behavior it's just to say if my parents had actually noticed me i probably wouldn't care so much about where uh, whether everyone else on the planet adored me unfortunately i'm a bottomless pit of need <laughs> that actually that actually is miss culty night that is her oh like, my honey. god Wrapped take me to the church jenny empty children <laughs> empty vessels that is so funny like thank god for you because I love that you identify with that <laughs> that really that means but this a lot. is like no one in hollywood or really in the whole world wants to admit this because even when you are that person who's like i need the attention i need the thing you're supposed to downplay it and act like you're cool right. like you're like i'm just posting this picture because I right. just want you to know what's going on with me. Like, you know, yes. it's yeah. just, Oh, it's just being like, just here, here's all my childhood guys. trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and so has there ever been a time where you're like, uh Oh, too much. I've shared too much of me. The world now owns my innermost thoughts and I can't pull it back. Yes. Yeah, for sure. There, And it's mostly stuff with the kids. I mean, I think there have been times and now I think it's different. Yeah. Uh, when I first started out and I was just tweeting into oblivion, it didn't feel like there were consequences for my actions. One, Twitter, it was a different world. You could say sure. anything. And actually, yeah. sure. the more sort of brazen you were, mm-hmm. the more you were rewarded for it. 100%. As a woman, especially. Um, and so I would just say, like, fucking anything, you know. And people, even girlfriends around me would, you know, bitch about stuff. And I'd be like, oh, there's a tweet in that, you know, and mm-hmm. just like shoot it off because nobody was listening. And then all of a sudden I felt like there was this shift where I couldn't get away with as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it did start to sort of take a toll when, um, you know, after I, I feel like after, well, first I was like, I got in so much trouble because I was, was posting about, you know, Sid's birth and, you know what that was that whole you journey now everybody does it but at the time it was like on gma it's like oversharing can oh, you go believe- yourself she just showed herself getting an epidural you know what i mean but back then <laughs> nobody your imagine that, that. it right. was like right. and so then my response because i was like indignant about it and also in the throes of my postpartum haze i was i, I posted a picture of my placenta which was like the most grotesque thing you'd ever seen and i remember <laughs> writing I don't know if this is oversharing, but I think my placenta looks really young and hot in this photo. Oh my God. And it was like, just like Howie Mandel, who was actually my doctor's name, holding this like <laughs> Wait, bloody blob <laughs> of a placenta. Ew. And yeah, so like that point, I was like, fuck them. Yeah. I'm going to say whatever I, I want. want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then um, when real things started to happen with the kids, you know, there have been times where I'm like, I regret putting that out there. Mm-hmm. I regret that, like, when you Google me, you can find out that I dropped Sid mm-hmm. on his head. You know, like, that mm-hmm. really kills me because it's so, I have so much guilt about it. We were playing, and he fell in the kitchen, and he fractured his skull. And it was it was a really scary three, two and a half days for me um and like so traumatic and and at the time i'm like i want to share this because i feel like if i only share the good things that i'm lying to people Mm -hmm. and i want other moms to know that like i am going through this shit you might be too yeah um but for me it it like took i don't know i just hate seeing it Mm -hmm. so there are things now where i'm like i don't want to share that but I'll but tell you God. actually fun stuff, okay. weird stuff. That's well, not but thank God right. you are sharing because I mean, it's like, I'm so <clears throat> sorry for you that that sucks. And that like that you have to relive that trauma every time you're like, what did my picture look like on the red carpet tonight? <laughs> you know, like, Dropped yeah. her son on his yeah. head. Like, that fucking sucks. But also yes. like, thank God for people like you, you know, yeah. like, because no, because it is happening to everybody and nobody's yeah. talking about it. Like it's the so amount of people having kids and like fucking them up somehow and yes. being like, they have to act like they're not. You can't tell your parents, the grandmas and grandpas will be mad. Yeah. Your friends are going to everyone's judging you so everyone's i love that for you. you 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. I had a miscarriage during the quarantine. Nobody knows that. Mm-hmm. I just, but like, I didn't care. I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but mm-hmm. I have two healthy kids. Mm-hmm. And it was this thing called a blighted ovum where there's like nothing in the sack. Ooh. So I was just like a psychopath and nauseous for maybe. I don't know, a month. And oh. then at the, the, we had to fly back and we had to like go, you know, do, a, a, I had to have a DNC during the oh. pandemic in New York, which was gnarly. But I'm like, God. I don't need to share, you know, there were so many people at the time sharing these crazy harrowing stories of mm-hmm. miscarriage and losing a- actual ch- babies. And I'm like, I don't need to like put that in the world. It just mm-hmm. doesn't even... I think that's the thing, though. It's like I feel like we're kind of going back into like the middle where everybody felt like they had to share every part of their life, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. But like you don't have to. You can choose to decide what you want to put out there, and whatever it is is fine, right? Because people will connect with it. But it's also nobody's fucking right, or like yeah, not everybody. Well, and now I also feel very guilty about one of the topics I wanted to talk to you about. (laughs) Don't because I don't. I mean, she doesn't actually feel. If I were actually in a (laughs) room with people, I would say everything. You know, it's just, it's yeah. only about, right. Sometimes the, this clickbait just gets out of control these days. Well, this is clicky. So okay. when you Google you, <laughs> um, the thing that came up for me was Jenny and Jason are having more sex in quarantine. Oh, it's, that was a funny one. It's brought us closer. And I was like, I f- everyone I know got divorced. I could not hate Chris Knight more That's into quarantine. Hysterical. Like if I hear your voice one more time on a goddamn zoom from the other room, <laughs> it is over. Did you really have more sex? Well, I was having so, I mean, I was having not a lot of sex before. So the up was like, <laughs> because yeah. So it was like a, it was a tick up for me, <laughs> okay. which means like maybe I was having sex once a month. Yeah. Versus like, <laughs> sex. like don't, don't touch me. Don't come near me. <laughs> Um, okay, you know what? I like this. I'm a workaholic, you know? So for me, like, I don't think about physical touch. And, you know, I, I, on my podcast, I talk about love languages, like mm-hmm. the five love languages. How do you show love? How do you receive love? Yeah. And Jason always says, like, he's like, physical touch is one, Jenny. It really <laughs> is. And it's the one I always forget when I'm interviewing people. I'm like, there's a fifth. Like, I can't it? remember But what for it me, is. I don't think to, like, right. touch other humans. No, right. Except my children no. who I want to, like, swallow whole. Right, right, right. Well. So, yeah, I did actually like get around to having sex because jason had me trapped in a house I'm like oh and i probably got pregnant like the one time i had sex <laughs> well this is what i'm like i was like damn because i was a little bit like oh really like i'm happy you share everything but like i didn't need the good stuff <laughs> like just oh my god that's stuff. funny but now i feel bad because you had no oh my god don't too. feel bad no mm-hmm. thank god i don't have a third kid you guys like thank god oh my god <laughs> oh my god i well, i would really be do you want more children no okay <laughs> you're done. i'm so done do you ever watch the celebrity like world and think why are people not tying the tubes like i just saw there was like some yes. article about some they don't really tie t- it's more of a vasectomy these <laughs> days. are the tubes for the ladies yeah. that tie? okay yeah. the vasectomy but i'm like if you are cheating on your wife that actively and having that much True. sex with people you're not supposed to, like, I would get a vasectomy. I, That's um, a good absolutely. Point. You don't want to have a, a... Well, because their wives probably want more kids. And also men are f- stupid. Like, they're, they're they are thinking they are f- stupid. What about in New York when I was pregnant with Laszlo? I was like, you're going to tie my tubes when you take him out. Yeah. And Jason flipped out. <gasps> I was like, we need oh. to have a conversation about this. Oh. And it ended in me like pregnant, jumping from a moving <laughs> cab, being like, it's my body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So, oh shit! Honestly, valid. Oh, no. I mean, he was like, oh, no. "No, don't make that decision yet. You're you're pregnant. You don't know necessarily." I don't know. But here's like, the oh. advice my mom gave. She said, "Never tie your tubes. Have your husband do the vasectomy because if he ever leaves you, yes, then the chances of him procreating with someone else and you having to have half siblings Ew. with some that like monster me. stepmother. That's hmm. true. And share, you know, whatever's left of their money with like some other demon children that weren't hers. That's true. I oh, love that's dark, yeah. Becca. That's Becca Tobin but in I a nutshell my mom's for a you. Lawyer. She's like, yeah. we're gonna think ahead. We're gonna yes. problem solve and trouble. Becca, shoot. look Very on the dark." Side Tobin here at Lady Gang. <laughs> but I also like the idea because my OB was like, well, it lowers your risk for, I think, right. ovarian cancer. Really? Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, what else can you take out? Yeah. Like, yeah. I want to be like one of those watermelons they use to put a fruit salad yeah. in. Yeah. Just scoop it all just empty. Out. Yeah. But like, just... do I really need two kidneys? Like, yeah. someone needs this. Yes. Let's just, you know. What other th- odds can I, like, I agree. Just beat? Speaking of shit, I m- wrote a note on my notes here. Famous guy, free shit. 
So I saw something that you had written and you were like, it's bullshit because Jason gets so much free stuff. Mm. Yeah. And like, I don't get the free stuff, but I feel like that has changed. Yes. That was at the beginning of our relationship. I really resented Jason's fame on every level when I first met him. (laughs) I love that. It was like the thing that I hated the most about him because first of all, I was like 26 years, 27 (laughs) years old. And I went from feeling like when I walked into a room, I was feeling hot to like, nobody saw me. I was invisible. I was just Jason Biggs' plus one. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm like, what is happening to my life? (laughs) It also like when you're a workaholic and when you have ambition and drive and maybe those things like haven't come to fruition yet Mm -hmm. for you, the things that you want, being with somebody famous is the worst thing you could do to yourself because you're tortured on a daily basis. You, all you do is compare yourself Mm -hmm. to where they're at. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it it was horrible. He got so much free shit and just better treatment in general. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, he would go to nail salons and they're like, would you like a seat here? How about here? You want a free massage? I mean, it's just anything you can imagine. And I'm like, he is such, (laughs) he's one of those celebrities too, that will always be recognize yes yeah. it's like yeah you know <laughs> what I mean? it was what? during it was during that time before like before there were social only, media and all like the bullshitty like fake celebrities yeah. like that's it's a celebrity like real everybody movie knows. stars yeah. oh yeah yeah and then it's okay so, so i have a question for you and i pre-gamed this with jack you were not here yet is it ever weird when you're having sex and then do you ever picture the pie scene from the movie and, like, <laughs> i'm saying sure she's <laughs> never been asked this before you def- oh, have you been asked this before i've never been asked this actually really i haven't um i don't know you know I didn't see the movies until I was married to him. Oh my God. Because I was like a theater major. I'm like, ugh, lowbrow. <laughs> you know? I didn't have any interest. And then one day he's like, you should watch it because like it did pay for our house. They're f- incredible. <laughs> You're like, it's wait, what I'm known for. This, like, yeah. I knew who Jason was. I was like, f- Jason Biggs, you know, because the I, the reason we <laughs> got set up was this producer. Oh, you ha- it was a set yeah. Wanted, how did you guys meet? It was a blind date. <gasps> we were both auditioning for this Kate Hudson movie, My Best Friend's Girl, and the the a guy who wrote Wait, the writer. Did you get that? I was in it. Yes. Yeah. At the time, <laughs> good I job. Wasn't. No, but I I was trying to get the Lizzie Kaplan role, oh. and at the time, the the guy who repped the writer was trying to date my sister, so he was just a manage, manager, mm-hmm. but he happened to have some cloud i guess he had access to the audition tapes and he said do you want to see the girls that you're up against <gasps> and like i mean as you guys know like that Amazing. never happens no, in never. hollywood no it's the only time it's ever happened and i'm just thinking like yeah do do i ever <laughs> like send that me the codes my dream right so i'm watching these girls and it was a small circle of mm-hmm. us at that point you know i knew I knew pretty much who I was up against. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, let's just see what this bitch can mm-hmm. do. You know what I mean? And watching it and it was so revelatory because you're like, oh, she's doing nothing that different. different. And right. but then it starts to dawn on you like how arbitrary Holly was and Hollywood is. And you're oh, like, yeah. wait, I thought that they would be like going in and giving like a Meryl Street performance. Sure. Yeah. You know? And that They're, really was annoying. But then he said, there's two guys we're choosing between. One is Jason Biggs and one is this other guy. Who do you think did a better read? And <gasps> before I even watched the tapes, I was like jason biggs he's like famous i'm not famous like of course i obviously am rooting for the underdog yeah sure. because i'm just projecting all over it <laughs> and then i watched the tapes and jason gave i i still say arguably one of the best performances of his career <laughs> oh my god this audition was like better than it even was in the movie and i'm like oh my god you have i'm it's him stand corrected i mm-hmm. you know he's mm-hmm. actually quite talented mm-hmm. Um, and I might be in love with him, but, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you need to give it to him. So then a few weeks went by, we had both gone back in for like the director and what, I still knew nothing. Yeah. But then my sister called and she said, would you go out on a double date with (gasps) Jason and me and Doug? And at the time, I'm like, I don't want to date an actor, but I do want to be in that movie. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) And Sam's like, it's free sushi. Okay. I'm in. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. I love that. Yeah, and then he, we both went. We kind of start, we like went on one date, but I'm like, he's not the one. You know, I was like, he's sweet, but no. Yeah. yeah. Again, because I was like annoyed that he was famous. Right. I didn't want to be with him. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that's why. I, um, well, yes. well, so then he gets the job. He got the role in the movie. I went back to hating him, of course, because mm-hmm. I hadn't heard. <gasps> and then I found out I was doing the film too. We were in Boston together for three months. And Mary, is that when you found later? Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Then it went really fast. Yeah. Once like, you whoa. said yes. Yeah. Wow. It was weird. That's so cool. It's so fucking cute. It but, is cute. But you know, it was a wild time. We were like definitely not in the place to be making life choices. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, you know, let's get married. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> get married.
So I know we all feel like we are on all the time. Life is getting busier. There's sports, there's events, there's weddings, there's all of these responsibilities. And sometimes you just need to hit reset. And I did it this past weekend at an outdoor bar with live music here in Austin. It was a beautiful day. And I just really was craving a frosty, frosty beer. So I did our sponsor, Coors Light. So when you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. It is perfect for a moment to unwind. When you crack open that Coors Light, you're sending the message to yourself, to the world. I'm ready to chill. Let's turn it off. We love it so much. If you need to take a second for yourself, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash lady. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Enjoy. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by Brooklinen. I got Brooklinen sheets on all of my beds and people are always asking me, oh my God, why is this bed so comfortable? And I'm like, Brooklinen, heathered cashmere sheets, the one, the only. I love them so much and I'm obsessed with getting the right sleep and we could all use a little more sleep. So make sleep the best it can be with your Brooklyn and sheets. This is what's really, really cool. And the reason why Brooklyn and sheets are such a high quality and so affordable is that they work directly with suppliers. Brooklyn and cuts out the markups and passes through those savings right to the customers. You don't have to scour the web for the best deal. You can just get them. And if you need an extra nudge, check out the five-star reviews over 100,000 of them. Mine included. You heard that right. They have 100,000 five-star reviews. And for a limited time, Brooklinen is offering a free gift with purchase. And if you miss out, you can use promo code LADY20 anytime for $20 off your purchase of $100 or more at brooklinen.com. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code LADY20. Head to brooklinen.com for your free gift with purchase today. So I am obsessed with the decorating process when it comes to my house and all the rooms in it. But now that I'm done, I have a little itch that I want to scratch. And that's what I do with one of our sponsors, Redecor. So it's this amazing mobile game and it's all about interior decorating. So it's an amazing creative outlet that lets your imagination run wild, experiment with different colors, materials, and textures as you design room after room. I really do love sitting there and playing Redecor. So it's a home design app and mobile game in one. It's a place to play, explore designs, find inspiration, and connect with others who share your passion for home decor. So they've got style guides with tips, tricks, and advice for decorating. The graphics are very realistic and detailed. You really just need to go over there and check it out. And you can also enter design challenges and let other players be the judge. It's all a lot of fun. Practice your interior design skills and express your creativity with Redecor. Download Redecor for free on the App Store or Google Play Store. That's R-E-D-E-C-O-R on the App Store or Google Play Store. Happy designing. You're listening to The Lady Gang. Tell me about City of Likes. Oh my God. Because we can't read it. Yes. We don't know what it is. Yeah, so um, wait. You're, so this is your first... It's my first your novel. first novel. And it took me three years to write. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. I thought I was going... To, you know, I remember going into this agent in... New York and he sat me down and he's like, well, your last two books did okay. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean? They did okay. He's like, yeah. I said, you know, I made the times list. He's like, so (laughs) he's like, that that doesn't mean anything. And I said, oh, okay. He's like, well, so do you want to know, do you want to tell me what you want to do next? Or do you want me to tell you what I think you should do? Oh, Oh, wow. I I mean, but he's like a, he's like a big agent. So I kind of felt like, all right, he's an expert. Yeah. 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 Tell me what you think. You're like, honestly, tell me. I'll do that. Yeah. (laughs) Tell me what you think I should do. And he said, I think you have a voice for fiction. I think you should try to write fiction. Damn. And I left just reeling. I mean, I didn't think I, I, I was like, oh, that guy's in. I, I mean, I don't even know what that meeting was about. And I left and I thought about it and I went and I wrote the proposal for what I thought would be a third memoir. Yeah. And I was so bored by it because I was writing for Parents Magazine at the time. I was doing a lot of mom stuff. Yeah. And it just didn't, it wasn't getting at like the core of what I wanted to talk about, which was this idea of if you're trying to show people what a good mom you are on Instagram. And you're trying to prove to the world, like how good you are at this. How good are you really? And that just Mm. was Mm. stuck in my head and I couldn't let go of it. And I knew that I wanted to talk about this weird world of of influencing that like Mm -hmm. I had suddenly found myself in Mm -hmm. and just like, 
the dark side of it mm-hmm. yeah and the addiction that's like so inherent mm. and so that was kind of the beginning of the novel mm. and so i kind of just i went for it and it sucked for a while it wasn't good i didn't know how to like really tell the story correctly because i had never had to write something so long yeah <laughs> like, i mean how, how do you do that it that's was so, so hard. hard i mean honestly we and balled out on our next book we we're like we barely wrote it oh <laughs> you know my god I mean? yes we're like let's write a couple short essays <laughs> yes <laughs> call it a day totally when you're used to writing short formats it's it so was, easy i don't know oh. yeah writing a novel seems i don't know so f-ing hard i had severe anxiety watching you go places to write on instagram because i just oh, was yeah. like so I, much pressure it, i yeah. could never like i would have probably been institutionalized yeah. if I had the responsibility to write a novel mm-hmm. and nobody was really watching me I wish I had somebody saying like Jenny you better turn this in right because mm-hmm. I had to write it before I could sell it yeah which Holy my other two shit. books I sold based on, on your per- on your s- following and whatever pitch. yeah 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 so I had to write it before I sold it and literally you guys I I put I submit I put it out for submission probably two years ago uh-huh. and pulled the submission because it like it wasn't ready. Oh my gosh! <gasps> oh, and that was like a whole like hell. And I mean, it, the whole journey has been so daunting. It's been it's been the child that I've been like pregnant with. For <laughs> See, that's why I don't need another one. This baby. <laughs> no, no, I don't need another. I, this is my third kid. Will you ever say who the characters in your book are like loosely based on? I think you'll be able to tell. Great! Oh, I'm oh so shit! Excited. Okay, cute. Then you also sold the TV series. Yes. Yeah, so I gave Sony uh, how. F- rat can we Two just chapters. like hold on just take that for a moment just like oh my god let that sizzle. are you tony robbins yes i am <laughs> cole walker i didn't go to the tony robbins and come back to lady gang being like i walked on coals that's you that's so funny <laughs> like live that like you you said you struggled with it and like yeah. didn't think it was good and now here you are like just i hope that you yes oh, amazing are you able to a Did, little bit i mean it is sort of like i think i've always been driven by just um failure yeah (laughs) failure drives me Mm -hmm. and the more people tell me no just the more I kind of like bear Mm -hmm. down Mm -hmm. I can't accept defeat you are (laughs) Kelty did that resonate really hard with you yeah and now I'm gonna write that I can't take it It, it's like I'll just come at it people are like you look like a horse on television your face is your forehead is way too big and then I'm like you know what I'm gonna do slick my hair back bitches (laughs) you haven't seen a forehead (laughs) that is nine inches long yet meanwhile Jack and I read one bad thing about ourselves and I'm like gonna crawl Crawl into a a hole yeah I'm like I actually think I'm done with the whole of entertainment and Industry. Or, oh or God, if I get a so job offer that's like, if, if the tone of voice from my agents isn't excited enough, I'm usually like, oh, you don't think I deserve this either. That's so crazy. I'm just going to, I'm going to bow out. And I'm right. like, I should quit. That's so interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, here's my Emmys that I won. They're daytime TV Emmys, but <laughs> I will still call myself an Emmy. And that, one of them is in the drawer upstairs because there's not enough room on my I love with this. the book that I wrote. I just lo- I love, love this. It's so foreign to be that type of person. Yeah, it's like, pretty to crazy. Be I fucking love being fueled by failure. Oh my what, god! What I were love your parents when I'm like? Did no. they love you? No, you just read this. No, I think, and I had dyslexia as a kid, and I always oh, felt like hard. I wasn't smart, yep. and I felt like I couldn't yep. do it, and I yep. just felt like everything was always a struggle. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like hearing no doesn't phase me. Yeah, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. also being an actress for as many years as I was an actress, I just feel like. <laughs> like I'm the best at a job interview. Cause I'm like, there's nothing you can do. You can't hurt me. I've been like carved out <laughs> and getting run over by like a million cars. There's like nothing to be done at this point. 100%. I'm just going to keep going. It's kind of a sweet way to live though. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, it's, but like yeah. you guys come on the side. Because, no, I like, mean, it must be nice. You know, you're just, like, I would love to wake bring up it. one day and be able to yeah. be that way. Bring it. But I'm not, you don't like this podcast. Cool. <laughs> you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, you know? exactly. She I'm like, then you have terrible taste. I don't know what yeah. to tell yeah, you. Yeah, you really do. Our reviews on <laughs> iTunes, and it's like 
fucking awful. All people think we are is vapid. They're not wrong, but yeah. I don't want to be reminded of that constantly. Loves it. Oh, that <laughs> well, is no, so, like, you, you think yeah, I am. You think you're pretty great. Like, I am great. <laughs> that's, you're welcome. So I won't read reviews. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a difference. That's a b- big difference. Yeah. Uh, I'm a sucker for punishment. Well, I also do learn from it. I have to say. She like, takes yeah. a note. I She's... do. I like to take a note. So I was a Rockette okay. many years ago. Okay. And they would come before, like if you did six shows a day yes. at Radio City, they'd come with like the legal pad of notes and be like, Kelty, your uh-huh. eyes were not looking at the mezzanine right. during the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> oh my God. In act one. Like, you you know, so you like, stupid. whatever. Anyway. So I'm like, I'm really good at taking note. When these yeah, girls are like, please adjust. don't take a painkiller and then write a business email. I'm like, okay, I won't ever do that again. Uh-huh. You know, like yeah. you have to live your life. Anyway. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. This is not about me. This is about you, Jenny. Is it? You. But I am curious, like why? Because I don't meet a lot of people that, that have this. You guys have it. Yeah. It's... I know why my, I why? can unpack mine. Tell I know. Me. So my brother's bipolar okay. and he was not diagnosed until his 20s. So I okay. lived my whole life with an older brother who was just fucking awful. Okay. Like mean, like I had to hide in my closet. Like, okay. And my brother was so catonic. Like there was just yes. so much going on yes. that the only way that I could get love from the people around me and uh-huh. my parents was by being perfect. And achieving. And achieving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like the only time. Were you time anorexic? Of- I know it's like a weird thing to I know. ask. But- no. I mean, I. I mean, she one tea. I have an weird, I have so weird like, food. I have like a deep food thing. Yeah. Like, okay. Tell like, her about your bachelor interview. She was on The oh, Bachelor. Yeah. I was on The Bachelor. I got kicked off on like the second night, which is. She has the most iconic exit of all time. I mean, I was She's iconic. The camera. I can't she spent the- five minutes with Brad. <laughs> <laughs> She's fucking <laughs> losing her mind. It's amazing and i have a hair chain do you remember when people were wearing like chain headbands like it was like kind of a thing where they would like hang down (laughs) so one shoulder she's like i think i said something to him that was offensive (laughs) we did what did he ever tell you what what happened it was about his tie it was about his tie yeah because it was lilac purple (laughs) of course a lilac purple tie when you're trying to seduce women just saying (laughs) oh my god (laughs) anyway long story short no, when I went on The, the bachelor, bachelor, they did this psychology test uh-huh. where they, like, lock you in the Sheraton LAX for, yes. like, five days, and they test you. Uh-huh. And this woman was like... And they give you Valtrex, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't have a cold sore This woman out. is oh, like, this, this is woman's so like, funny. this is just so wild, you know, in all of my years of being a psychologist, old as fuck. She's like, I've never seen anyone that cares about food less than you. And I was like, Whoa. I have trained myself so deeply. To not yeah, that goes deep. Interesting. She has a relationship with food that is the most unique of anybody. It's when What you- is this? Food doesn't equal love to you? No. Food is like, you got to survive. <gasps> she really? But she needs to live. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's not even like she doesn't nourish... It's- her at body all. She doesn't care. Like She'll eat like a Snickers and, and a Klondike and a Diet Coke mm-hmm. and wow. binge on that and then nothing. I can't believe I'm alive right now, Jenny. <laughs> That's <laughs> fascinating. But then you do care because you get the colonics. Because I'm You're always on a journey. I'm always on a journey to like get it together. She's extreme. <laughs> she also can't have wow. fun. Like everything is like doing something that's going to like task. further her. Yeah. Do you have fun? <laughs> Let's turn this around. This is no. not the Kelty Night Podcast. <laughs> okay. No. Do you have fun? Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it is hard. I'm a oh my three. God. I'm a three anagram. <gasps> Me too. I have the sacred anagram Thank right you. above you. You understand. So I mean, do there's I need nothing to even that's say fun. You? Yeah. Have, when's the last time that you fully belly laughed and it wasn't? an achievement so i belly laughed i was actually just rereading i you casey rose wilson her book yes. and she, she was i was on the plane actually coming here and she said that her kid wanted to play make-believe with her and he's like i'm gonna pretend that i just collected all of your amazon packages at the door and i'm gonna pretend that i can hold them all because i mean i don't know you order so many who knows if i can actually she's like wait he's pretending to act to hold my like fake amazon packages like what am i raising this kid to be and that that kind of like just set you over the me. edge. I okay. had to send Jason a screen grab because Jason's an Amazon whore. So, oh my god, I wanted him to see that. <laughs> That's my husband. But that did kill me. But that, you know, but no, to act. And I was reading it because I'm interviewing her. So uh, it, was work. it was work. Yeah. Mm. Shit. I know. It's dark I see you. I see you. It's so hard. Let's talk about the podcast before we wrap. Third wheel podcast. Yes. So you have been approached for years about doing something, and now this is finally it. Yeah, so Jason and I thought about doing something together for a long time. We did a serious show on Radio Andy that just basically, there was no format, you guys. It was just me and Jason would get into a fight weekly on (laughs) on air. That is the format, baby. Fucking weird. 
And like, finally, you, they came was it like, were you, were you like, today we're going to talk about artichokes and then you'd fight about it or just your no. random shit just unpacking? Jason's like, what are we going to do today? Because Jason always, since I'm the writer of the like, he's like, babe, he's like, what's planned? What did you come up with? And I'm like, today we're going to talk to this girl. Shut the kale up. I just want to know like what her life is like. <laughs> Someone I follow on Instagram. Oh, and then we get into like this massive fight. He'd say something. I'd say something. And then by the end of it, I think Andy called us and was like, maybe you guys should just do once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's like, F- that, you know, because Jason's yeah. still, you know, cause, because Jason had this like crazy, has had this crazy like right career he's like path. you don't fucking once a I month me once a month oh like a yeah. slow fill oh, fuck yourself yeah, andy yeah. cohen yeah, welcome yeah. to the dark side exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly but he's he's transferring over to more serious stuff now right yeah i just saw this movie he did the other day that was so heavy i saw I'm, something of him he was like in a trench coat and i was like <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> and it was, i don't know this man CS, yes uh, what is it is he on CSI right now? It's like a crime show. I love, I love how you don't know. This work. <laughs> That's amazing. She yeah. literally turned around to her oh. friend. Who's uh, my here friend Allie. I was like, is he on CSI? I get annoyed because like when you have an actor husband, the benefit is like most of the time they're free to be your assistant. Mm. He's one of those actors that like doesn't know what to do with himself when he's not like being told what to do by a director. He's on CSI Miami? I don't think so. Is oh. he? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, maybe, I'm like Allie's free like, tequila. I, I have no idea. It's mine. <laughs> Okay, so you're, but anyway, when he's but not he's around, I know he's wearing errands, a trench then, coat. Then he's working on something, and then I get it. He mad. runs your errands for you? Oh my God, like, he drove me to the airport this morning, you guys. I saw the text. He's like, what? His yeah. call, he texted on Instagram. His call was 10 a.m., and he was like, baby, I'll take you. My call's not till 10. Oh, That's what I love for someone to take you. Were you at LAX? Thank God he's not a three anagram. Can you imagine? What is he? A nine. He's like a seven or a Ooh, six. Oh, Jack's a seven. Something. I'm a seven. Yeah, he's like Becca's such a, a three, but she doesn't feel it. Yeah, interesting. She's like a dark three. My interesting. Are you a, you're so are you a three cusp? Are you a three cusp? I don't actually know where I fall. Do we Is know? There cusps? Did we find that out? I don't no. know. You can be I, kind of my a wing. Is, they no, have wings. Yeah. yeah. My madness is all internalized. Yeah, she's like, what's like happening a three in inside, but she'll never tell you about it. Got it. Interesting. She wants all the things I want, but she's like no. too cool to tell in, you. Uh, in a pr- incorrect. <laughs> I don't want your f- pursuit for fame is unmatchable. Unmatched. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> it's so good. This will have happened. This ha- will have been. Your- God, wait, are you going to the women? Where were you when I Hold lived on. in LA? Are, are you, you going to the? Are, are you are you going to women in entertainment next week? Are you in town for this? No, the Hollywood Reporter. I'm going to Austria. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, nice. Jenny. My one of my best friends mm-hmm. is the catering director <laughs> at okay. Hyatt Century City. I'm dying. Stop. Already. Stop and it. He was like, What is happening? He was like, Do you want to come? He's like, Oh, I'm doing the. Hollywood Reporter, Women in Entertainment. And I was like, bitch, can you get me in? And he oh, f- called the Hollywood Reporter. was like, I would like my friend to be at my table. Because, the, you know, the Hyatt gets one table at every event. The Golden oh, Globes so or whatever. Me, so I'm going to walk table? the red carpet like this the f***ing Hollywood Reporter invited me. I'm probably going to rent something from Albright. It might be Gucci. I'm going to look so amazing. <laughs> and they're going to be like, unbelievable. How did, she, how did she get in here? And then they'll be like, oh my God. Mindy Kaling? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston? Is that Kelsey you? Knight? <laughs> and I'm going to be like, no shame. are you going to sit at the catering table? I'm going to sit at the f***ing <laughs> Hyatt table and be like, Jen, great job. You were great on the morning show. Like, I don't give this a is, f- I love this. I thought you might be there. That's amazing. You'd probably get really invited, I'm actually though. doing the catering. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mm. but I'm also doing the like... prolon fast next week, so that I'm not even going to be able to eat the catering. You're doing prolon oh next my week God. again. Prolon, it's awful. Anyway, okay, Jenny. No, Jenny's who can write you. We've always said that if there's someone who could imbo- like encapsulate her, like it would be the most incredible character yeah. you've ever yeah. seen. In, in I your need life. to write you. Yes, I mean, if you want to be I best need friends, to write you in well, this show that you can star in. Y- yes, I'm a terrible actress. She's a terrible actress. In what? fact, how is this possible? Jenny, this is not about me, but okay. On the Thanksgiving day print that I host on CBS this week, I really want to be Roxy Hart on Broadway. So I made the director record me sitting in my parade outfit, singing Roxy Hart to send to the director. Oh, I have the video. Can I have this the video before I leave? I am she has blown sent, away. I, you're like next level, but I actually need this to happen because I honestly, we will be so rich. Well, you I try to, so rich. I try to describe Jesus. Kelsey like as a person and I'm like, she's so unbelievable that you just like can't do it she's this big special snowflake that like but you'd have to get the most incredible actress that you've ever like it has to be like a Meryl Streep because (laughs) it has to be performed (laughs) 
perfectly. Like, you are very tough. Well, see, look at this. You know what's going on see, in my like, head. Did you expect <laughs> that turn? I didn't. <laughs> that was a turn we didn't see coming. Okay, wait. So, wait, wait. So, C- City of Likes. I'm back to you. <laughs> what is the show about? This is Kelty's favorite podcast, though. The show? I mean, no. is this my new demo reel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the show I are you freaking? Started... Are you freaked the f*** out? About the show? No. You're the cool. thing for me is this. Who's writing it? Me. <gasps> but the thing for me is this, guys. Like, I, I don't come from the book world. I came from L.A., right? So, uh, like, I came from, like, the TV film side. And so I don't believe anything mm-hmm. is ever real in right. L.A. doesn't matter. Like, so they said I'm going to have a show. That doesn't mean anything. Right. That you could never see. For me, I like it that it, for me, honestly, and you'll relate to this, okay. the win is just having it in Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Babe. Like, the win is making everyone else Babe. see it and think Babe. that it's happening. Who, like, who cares? cares? What happened? Babe. I don't care. Oh. This is crazy. Talk about it. This is insane. Which one? What? What? Like, there's doesn't so many. even matter. I am working on a show right now. The episode just oh, yes, came yes, out. Yes. I'm working on a show. I sold the show to CBS, but okay. nobody knows about it because okay. they fired me. And then I went back and sold a show to them because I'm that spiteful. I love and, that. Um, so anyway, I sold a show to them. But like, literally, they're like, "What's the show?" And like, everyone's like, "What's the set look like? What's the font? Like, who are we booking?" And I'm like, "Me, me, me!" Through the Zoom, I'm like, "When yes. are we announcing?" <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, when That's can my headshot be on Variety that I can? Clip and put on Instagram. Yes, totally. Oh my God. I That's I'm like, the if the show ever goes, fine. Because but like, can I get a fucking article in Variety? Thank you. Because you know that how ephemeral this world. This yeah, like, it's, it's so this stupid, Jenny. World, stuff isn't real. But then, why does that get you guys? Like. To- that's my question. Like, no, but then why Becca's is that? Becca gets a new show on Disney Plus, like a massive series. And she's like, oh, here it is. Like one Instagram story. I'm like, it excuse me. That's a me. whole month of content. <laughs> oh, my God. Mind that there's shit. There's the why. There's oh, the close. <laughs> like, how the we- collecting accomplishments we love like, it like how the f- do you didn't do the full page grab the close up the just you because the highlight of your name in the article like this was at oh, least six stories my god <laughs> it's insane but that don't you feel that way about books because for me that's why i want that's how, why i went to books because i felt like nobody can change this yeah it's exactly what i wanted to say i'm the master of my own universe i'm directing every scene in here mm-hmm. i'm playing every role because i'm literally providing the dialogue and, con- and so and now it's just this tangible concrete realization of like what was in my head uh, the the tv show will never be that for me mm-hmm. like even if yeah. it does become some something and like mm-hmm. god you know how that is yeah probably won't nope but don't say that but i don't even when care it does because i'm not invested when in it which it feels also like such power mm-hmm. yeah you know when i sit on those like when i i sold the first show to abc and i remember jamie tarsus who loved jamie tarsus J- jamie was like a mega female producer oh. in hollywood and she passed away this oh, year f- i was sad um, oh. but she's legend legend okay. and i'll never forget when jamie called me and said jenny um the show isn't gonna go and jamie was like you could feel that she was so disappointed and i'm like okay bye you know because for me i was like i already have the win i already have the book like, yeah. you guys can't take that away from yeah. me and unlike with acting i don't have to watch somebody else do that role for mm-hmm. me i'm like you'll never have my material yeah. goodbye mm-hmm. so yeah. i don't know do you feel that way with your books does it or no? <laughs> well, there, here's where you guys are different. Kelty is a scam. <laughs> no, no, no. I have no, no actual no, no. talent. No, no, no. You are full of you talent. You are rocket. I, I can't mean, even no, like. No, she's not a good dancer. No. <laughs> Stop it. She's Honestly, I, she, her, she's she has flexible. tenacity. I had the right body. Uh-huh. Like I had the right body. Like I have the right torso to leg ratio, but like I was literally a rocket and on the God mic, Linda Haberman, bless your soul, would come on and she'd be like, you know, <laughs> there's a pickup in that time step wing. Like, you Stop. know, when you do a wing and tap, you're supposed to wing k- k- back in. Okay. I was just like, burr, burr, burr. she just was like, <laughs> on the surface, it looks like I'm a rocket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was Stop the it. worst rocket. Stop. I was the worst. <laughs> Stop it. Rocket. She just works really fucking hard. Being wore that bodysuit, bitch, that yellow crushed velvet bodysuit. Like you were <laughs> yeah. telling me I was the f- <laughs> this job. 
Oh Four God. auditions Wait, later. I feel like th- when you and I auditioned with each other a lot in New York, like in our Oh, Jenny life, will love this story. This is incredible. This sounds like something. Maybe Jenny. Honestly, like this is an episode of The Kelty Show. I know. Don't call so it sorry. The Kelty Show, but call it like something else. She's okay. telling our editor right now, don't call it The Kelty oh Show. Oh, my God. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I'm telling like okay. the people listening. Okay, so Kelsey and I used to audition against each other in New York all the time. All the time. Becca's our- so fucking talented, it's annoying. No. Oh my god, that's so what what kind of auditions? Musical for Broadway. Broadway. Oh, okay. Whoa. So we were going in for Legally Blonde when it was on Broadway. Okay. Going in for like one of the first replacement roles. And we all danced and she's in I a Sophie sh- like a short, 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 short. And a the bite of worst a Klondike. hair extensions that you've <laughs> ever seen in your life pulling it up for you jenny pulling it up for you but the most (laughs) in that room you would have thought she was like j-lo and we were the backup (laughs) like the energy she brought into the room was so aggressive and i was like i don't know her but she is some she's insane she goes in front of me she makes it through all the dance cuts and then it's down to like 10 of us Mm -hmm. and we go one at a time into the room and sing like 16 bars of a poppy or a musical theater song yeah so everybody has their songs like some people do like kelly clarkson and some people do like carrie underwood Kelty goes in. And I just want you to. I just want you to like take this for a moment. <laughs> oh my god! Are you kidding? She's showing her a picture. Oh my of Kelty god! Circa two thousand with a ble- with a box dyed hair and that a is fucking, bleach and Naomi's extension hair. baby. The hair was only this long, but she was down to the tit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh so my god! She goes in the room, and all these girls can sing. If you're auditioning to be on on Broadway mm-hmm. in a yeah. musical, like you'd think someone who care like who doesn't sing or carry a tune would be like, you know what, this maybe not it's this not, is for not me. my thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe I should just be the Nick City dancer and live my life and be right. cute. Well she went in that room and the walls are paper thin and she, <laughs> and, and everyone just stops, like stops in their tracks and no. all you hear coming from the room is Hey Mickey, you're so fine. But she has replaced the name Mickey with the director of the play's no. name. No. Hey Jerry, you're so fine. You're so fine. <laughs> Jerry Mitchell and no yeah yeah oh yeah and every single person is standing outside and they're like I don't know (laughs) what to do now what the to do and then she walks out of the room the most confident thing you've ever seen (laughs) knocked it out of the park she's like I nailed it (laughs) but meanwhile in that audition I love you Jerry Jerry stopped now I'm taking two tequilas in Jerry stopped me and he goes Kelsey 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 he goes Thank God you're so pretty. <laughs> it's not for you. Stop it. And yeah. then I walked out, but I didn't want those bitches to know that I got cut. <laughs> I crushed it. Okay. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Listen, Shane I am no Jenny. I have, we have been waiting to fucking sit in a room with you. Can I just I have say been that? Waiting to sit in a room with you guys. You're an icon. It's a famous. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know about. I mean, sure, I watched a movie in the '90s, but like you're <laughs> Jenny. Like I. I love your books oh, you're so, so incredible sweet. jack drove from venice <gasps> that's you know, so she was like, real i won't oh, miss God. this i, sat I in. actually oh, am so missing nice. my fifth wedding anniversary <gasps> yep she stayed in you town guys, stayed in town we just i am so beyond you're grateful, red and flattered what humbled you, that's well, so amazing what you have done with your persona i know it's like heartbreaking in some ways but has been so freeing oh Thank you. For the human beings of the planet. That, for the human that, beings of the planet. No, it's so because, sweet. Because, listen, no. everyone is being like, I just drink water. Yeah. It's annoying. Well, it's, and I think yeah. what it is, too, is the litmus test for me is if yes. my sister and I yes. agree on hating the same person. So mm, we'll, yes. be, we'll, we'll discover someone on Instagram and, and be like, this, she seems cool and her brand is cool. But inevitably... You end she up starts to grate. Yes. Grating. yes. Grating. I've never muted you. I've never, <laughs> never, never been muted. And my sister and I both, like when I told her I was coming here, she was like, that's the most exciting person you've had this whole time. And I promise so you, flattered. our girls will f-ing love you way more if, than if we ever had. We could J-Lo. literally. Jennifer Aniston on. I that mean. Is mean. <laughs> okay. Yes. But like, I just love your realism. I think you're just amazing. So listen, we are going to get behind City of Likes. It's going to be a best downloaded. Even though apparently it doesn't matter, it's going to be a bestseller. I want the book to no. That's another thing. I don't feel this way. I want the book to. Well, I want the book to make the list. But I know it's so hard. Don't all your books make the list? But nonfiction is so different. Yeah, it's different. You have to sell like eighty thousand books. Well, we. 
we're so excited for you. And we're most excited that we get to now go to the Church of Jenny every single week on the Third Wheel Podcast on Podcast One, wherever you get yeah. your podcast. We're we can so hear her and Jason fight. Yeah. Oh, I cannot be wait. Well, we did one the other night. Actually, Ari, my producer, it's funny. Every time he comes to these, he leaves with some weird epiphany <laughs> because he's watching other people, other relationships every time. And yeah. he, was one night he goes home. He's like, I think I have to do hallucinogenic mushrooms. And then he's like, maybe I'm drinking too Is much. Is that with the Chelsea Hel- Handler episode? It, no, it was the Justin Bartha one. Mm. He, he was, and he's like, I, maybe I need therapy. <laughs> and, you know, so every time I feel like I'm just like mind <laughs> him. Every mm-hmm. one of these is different. And every mm-hmm. time he leaves with a new That's realization great. about himself. I love mm-hmm. that. But it's an interesting a- assortment of couples. A very eclectic mm-hmm. group. Ooh. Can't wait. I'm Probably so excited yeah. for you. All right, everyone. Go pre-order the book right this f***ing minute. Or we'll... <laughs> Get ya. Okay. <laughs> you can follow two of Jenny's Instagram accounts, Jenny Mullen, and also Dictatorship Lunches. Nope. Dictator, dictator Lunches. lunches. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a dictatorship. <laughs> We're so excited to have you. There's so many things we didn't get to. You're going to have to come back after mm-hmm. the show You're launches. so kind. Thank and you, And we guys. will see, see you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday.